The Bible reading is Mark 12, 28 to 34. The most important commandment. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realised that Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The teacher of religious law replied, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth by saying that there is only one God and no other. And I know it is important to love him with all my heart and all my understanding and all my strength and to love my neighbour as myself. This is more important than to offer all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices required in the law. Realising how much the man understood, Jesus said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. God bless this reading to us today. Well, good day from uh, Salvos here at Tuggeron. And I want to thank Janelle for uh, reading our scripture to us today. The title today is Tips to Mental, Physical and Spiritual Wellbeing. And I trust that uh, as we share this time together that you might find this helpful. And, and helpful in a number of ways because the material that I've got today to share with you is, is a bit like uh, the parable that Jesus would tell from time to time. That he would draw from everyday human experiences a spiritual lesson. So we'll have a look at that for us today. Now Jesus said that the most important commandment concerns the relationship between God and humankind and between human beings. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And the second commandment is equally important. Mark 12, verse 30, 31, love your neighbour as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Now these verses speak of healthy relationships as a fundamental principle. Relationship with God and relationships with people, with other people. Not just the person next door. The word neighbour means one who is nearby which qualifies all people as worthy of our love. All people worthy of our love. Today I want to explore with you four earthly or earthy practical steps to building healthy relationships with others during this COVID-19 climate. I managed to find some good reliable material for this purpose. I also want to draw some spiritual parallels for every single step so that we do not overlook the health and well-being of our relationship with God. So, firstly, at each step we're going to look at how uh, this might relate to relationships between human beings, fellow human beings, and then we're going to spiritualise each step. So the first step to maintaining good mental and physical health in this COVID-19 climate is identifying new ways to socialise, being creative in the way that we develop our relationships and, and forging new ones using technology, for instance, contribute to improved mental health. It's, it's a proven fact. Tagunong Salvos has developed some great Zoom opportunities to increase social interaction. Captain Ross's epic Lake Tagranong circumnavigation over and over and over and over again created healthy social interactions and promoted physical health. So we're grateful to Ross for that. And also, there was a Red Shield Appeal benefit there for this church and this community. Good on you, Ross. Worshipping God is the spiritual parallel 
for identifying new ways to socialise. I'll explain. We worship God as creator, Lord of all, redeemer, and he has a plan for our lives and he is worthy of our praise. In identifying new ways to worship God at this difficult time, you might like to consider new music, listening and singing along, creating, uh, creatively writing prayers or prayers of praise and thanksgiving, and reciting these in an attitude of worship. Pray the Psalms or, uh, or the words of your favourite hymns. Use technology to create or absorb, observe worship that works for you. Whatever you do, spend time with God in an attitude of worship. Experience the peace and joy of this. Worship in new ways that deliver spiritual refreshment. So if you want to keep your relationship with God healthy, then identifying new ways to worship is key. The second step to maintaining good mental and physical health, bearing in mind we're going to spiritualize this, the second step to maintaining good mental and uh, physical health in this COVID-19 climate is talking to loved ones and friends regularly. Now I've spoken to my dad about this and he has become a little more proactive in his intention to converse with others. Staying in touch with your network of friends and loved ones via text, email, a video chat or, or just phone calls will help you and your health and keep your relationships fresh. Explore new topics to discuss together. It doesn't matter how long you've known one another or the nature of your relationship, a child, a parent or, or, or siblings, we can all learn something from each other and we can all support one another through talking with one another. Now, prayer is the spiritual parallel for talking to loved ones regularly. It's a little obvious, isn't it? Jesus modelled a prayer life. Jesus spoke with his father often. He taught his disciples how to pray. We see in Mark chapter 1 verse 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. This verse is the first of many examples of Jesus' personal prayer life. And the first of many lessons on talking to God. Now, if you want to keep your relationship with God healthy, then talking regularly to God is key. The third step in maintaining good mental and physical health in this COVID-19 climate is being a source of positivity. It's easy to get swept up in the media-made mayhem. Every day we find ourselves checking phones and, and watching the news and trying to, trying to get our heads around all of this stuff and being alarmed by comments like there's been an explosion of COVID-19 cases in such and such a state. Monitoring the news too deeply can have a negative effect on our psyche, particularly if we're feeling vulnerable, if things are uncertain around us. Maintaining good mental and physical health might require us to adopt a positive role with others that counters the, the destructive narrative. Now the spiritual parallel for being a source of positivity is Jesus' life and teaching. When Jesus' ministry on earth reached that crucial point, Jesus instructed his people to go out and tell the world of what, what they've heard and what, and what they've borne witness to and teach others my way, Jesus said in Matthew 28. In effect, be a source of positivity. In Mark chapter 5, after healing a demon-possessed man, Jesus said to him, the man wanted to follow Jesus, just accompany Jesus, and, and who wouldn't want that for themselves? had the opportunity arisen. But Jesus said, no. 
He said, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. In effect, be a source of positivity to your family. If you want to keep your relationship with God healthy, then Jesus' life and teaching is in your life is key. And this fourth and uh, final step, and none of these steps are, are conclusive. This final step to maintaining good mental and physical health in this COVID-19 climate is listening to others. Listening is such a powerful, powerful tool. In a study of listening conducted several years ago, actually 2003, so some time ago, two particular types of listening emerged. The first is listening to understand, and the second was listening to respond. Now, those who listen to understand engender greater confidence and uh, contentment in their relationships with people, in their conversations and in their relationships with people. The listener is patient and involved in the conversation on many levels. And the storyteller finds encouragement in this attention. Those who listen to respond, they get misunderstood. The listener tends to break into conversations with solutions or stories of their own. They don't mean any harm. They're just not good listeners. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is the spiritual parallel for listening to others. Now, how did I arrive at that point? I say that because among other spiritual riches, the Holy Spirit produces the fruit that enables believers to listen to understand. In Galatians 5, 23, you possibly know these verses. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are the spiritual characteristics that enable people to listen with compassion and empathy. And it inspires faith in others as they pursue a conversation and relationship together. If you want your relationship with God to be uh, healthy, then be filled with the Holy Spirit is what you really want. Now in conclusion, right at the beginning this uh, today, Jesus said the most important commandment concerns the relationship between God and humankind and between human beings. We look closely at the four very earthy steps that will help us with our relationships in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. However, each and every one of these steps has a meaningful spiritual parallel that is intended not only to help us with our relationships with others, but also develop a fruitful relationship with this wonderful God we worship. So let's think a little more of these in the midst of this COVID-19 climate. Worship God, prayer, Jesus' life and teaching, being filled with the Holy Spirit. If we could sing together, if we could sing together, I'd invite you to sing these words. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. Let's share a prayer together. Dear Father God, from the depth of our heart, we wish to be holy. We desire to be holy. And the only way that we can do that is to turn to you fully, disclosing to you all things, all things that might cause a, a rift between us from our side. And Father, we seek your forgiveness, your restoration, your redemption of us. 
And we seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit that we might not only have good relationships with other people, but we might have a holy relationship with you, Almighty God. Amen and amen. And God bless you each. It's been great to talk to you in this way. It's just disappointing I can't see your faces. What I'll do is I'll email you a link to that song and you can just sing that to yourself, to your heart's content because God, His Spirit, will work in your life. All you have to do is say, Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Now, don't forget folks, we're interested in, in, uh, in likes and subscribing. So if you don't mind uh, ticking the box for a like, you love this, uh, this has been great, I'm sure you like it, or, uh, or the subscribe uh, button, word, click on that, whatever you need to do, like and subscribe. God bless you. Ha, 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 ha.